Hi, everyone. So f five years ago, I was in a robotics competition at Mac University. It was mostly for high school students who had just graduated and were about to attend the engineering program in the fall. I was in grade 10 at the time, but my science professor convinced me to try and apply. The whole point of the competition was to build a sumo wrestling robot. Now, for those of you who aren't robot geeks like I was, sumo wrestling matches are a lot like the real sumo wrestlers, minus the outfits, and instead of people, you have robots jostling to push each other out of the ring. Now, we could pretty much design, build, and program the robot to do whatever we wanted. The only common element of the competition was that all the microchips we were given came with one line of code pre-programmed that told the robot to drive to the far edge of the ring, turn around, and then start the match. Well, when I thought about it, this seemed really stupid. Why should my robot go as far away from his opponent as possible before starting the fight? So I took that line out, reprogrammed mine to do a 180 right at the beginning of the match, follow his opponent to his edge of the ring, <laughs> And then before he even had a chance to turn around, just push him off. <laughs> so it's safe to say we did very well, and our team was undefeated, and we all won scholarships to the school. <laughs> Five years later, I'm still an inventor. I'm taking an engineering course at MIT and Harvard, and I have two startups that I'm working on. I get asked a lot, how did I get to this point? And when I thought about it, I realized that there's four life lessons that have really impacted my life. These are... Creativity, tenacity, having faith in my convictions, and following my passion. My first real experience with creativity happened when I was five years old. I just got my first Lego kit, and I was busy playing with my dad in the living room floor. I was madly building my creation, and my dad was busy following the instructions. <laughs> After about 10 minutes, he looks over and says, son, what are you building? This looks nothing like what's shown on the box. And this was a very critical point in my life, because he could have said, you know, son, let's start over, um, you know, we'll sh I'll show you how to do this properly. But instead he said, you know, wow, that's really cool, and helped me finish my creation, then he went out, bought a whole bunch more, and by the time I outgrew Lego, I had thousands of pieces. I also consider myself an artist. Besides engineering, I took art all the way through high school, grew up going to art camp in the summertime, and even studied fine art in Italy for a summer. This gives me an interesting perspective when it comes to product design. I'm not only as an engineer focused on function, but also as an artist cons considering form. This means that when I'm designing my science projects and now my vehicles, I not only care about how they work, but how they look, feel, and the user experience. When I was 19, I started applying this creativity in the business world. The Uno had just received a whole bunch of publicity and popular science lists as invention of the year and put it on the cover of the magazine. And I decided I want to actually have a go at making this a real company and see the Uno get out there. But I'm 19 years old, just finished high school, no engineering degree, no business experience, and no credibility. So I had to be open to some pretty unconventional ways of raising money. So I went on the reality show Dragon's Den, and here's a clip of how it went. Hi, I'm Ben Gulak, I'm 19 years old from Milton, Ontario. The product is the Uno, and my company is BPG Technologies, and I'm looking for one and a quarter million for 15% of my company. Better be good. The bit I'm going to start with an offer. You're looking for a million and a quarter? If you were to do that for, oh, 30% of the firm, get down under three, four million dollar valuation. I would certainly be there. I'm in on that offer. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> okay, so you've got a fairly consistent view of people willing to participate. Is you're saying that one and a quarter million for 20%? Yeah, that's as high as I'll go. Can you give us just a moment to talk amongst ourselves? Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> hey, Ben, we've talked about it. I think it's unanimous that we believe in you and we're comfortable doing the deal at one and a quarter million for 20% of the firm. <laughs> Do we have a deal? We have a deal. So this brings me to my next lesson, the importance of tenacity. In grade 10, I was faced with a very difficult decision. The year before, I'd had my first science fair experience. As part of the standard grade 9 curriculum, we had to build a science project and present it at the regional fair. 
I spent about two months working on this project. I had a little magnetic train that floated off the tracks. And I got lucky and got selected to be one of 16 projects across Canada chosen to represent Canada at the International Science Fair in Portland, Oregon. Now, I have to put this fair into context for you. It's not your typical run-of-the-mill regional fair. You have students flying in from all over the world competing for $7 million in prizes. On top of that, this was the first time I actually saw students actively applying all the useless facts and formulas we learn in school to actually build cool things. So I, I was hooked. I knew I want to do science fair, and I want to come back and win. And I figured, since I only spent two months working on my project this year, and I made it to the international fair, I'm going to work on next year's project for a whole year, then I'll come back and clean up. Well, it's safe to say that did not happen. A year later, after working every weekend on the project, pretty much sacrificing any chance at a social life and having a million sleepless nights, I'm sitting in the audience at the regional fair waiting to hear if my name is selected for the team. The only thing I can compare this to is the moment in Zoolander when Derek thinks, when he's waiting in the audience thinking he's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> when they call Hassel's name, Derek is so sure that he won that he jumps up, goes on stage, and has to be told, I'm sorry you didn't win. That's what it was like for me. I was devastated when I didn't win. I felt like I'd just wasted an entire year working on something, sacrificed all this time and energy into a project that I got absolutely no rewards for. And I had to make the difficult decision. Do I quit? I mean, I love making these projects. But at the same time, a whole year's worth of work for absolutely no reward? This was a decision I had to make myself. My parents couldn't make it for me. My teachers couldn't tell me what to do. And it took about two months before I finally decided to give it one more shot. That summer, I entered the McMaster Engineering Competition, which I told you about earlier. Then a few months later, I developed another robotics project that got chosen to be on Team Canada, won at, ICE, at the Intel Fair. And the next year, I developed the UNO. Two years ago, I had another difficult decision I had to face. After the Dragon's Den clip, I found two more investors that were willing to come in for half a million each. Everything was lined up, the checks were supposed to be in the mail, and life was looking pretty good. Then, in early September, the recession started. The new investors pulled out, and eight months later, four of the five Dragons had also pulled out. So I was stuck with, I didn't have enough money to actually make the UNO work, and I had to decide, should I quit and just be a normal student? Or should I really fight for this project I believed in? I ended up raising enough money in one of the toughest economic downturns of recent history. Which brings me to my next lesson, having faith in your convictions. In grade 11, I made the difficult choice to switch high schools during my senior year, leaving all my friends behind to, per to work on the UNO, a science project. In grade 9, my first project I worked on for two months. The next year, I worked on it for a year. And each year after that, my projects got more complicated and took more time. Over the summer of grade 11, I had the idea for the UNO. And I really believed in it and thought it would be a success. But I knew it was going to take a lot of time to actually make work. And at that point, I decided to switch schools to Chisholm Collegiate in Oakville that allowed me to have a more flexible workload so that I could spend the time I really needed to on the UNO. And it ended up being one of the best decisions of my life. A year ago, I had a similar experience with this. A friend and I had an idea to start an extreme sports company. We were going to build a new type of off-road vehicle, a crossover between extreme and power sports. It's a skateboard that you stand on with snowmobile tracks underneath it and a racing engine that literally lets you shred just about over anything at high speed. I went to my board of directors. At the time, we had money in the Uno Bank account. And I said, I think we should pursue this. We should invest in it, build a prototype, and see what happens. They didn't get it. They didn't see the potential, they didn't see the market, and ultimately said no. So I went, I talked to my parents, I said, I really think this is a good thing. I showed them the presentation. They invested a little money. I went to the bank and took a bank loan out to fund the first few months of development. Then we brought on angel investors. And now, a year later, we have a contract with the US Air Force to develop the military version. We have an NBA Orlando Magic basketball team sponsoring us, and we're building a red version for, Shre for uh, Ferrari and Rockstar Energy is another sponsor. Again, a very good decision. The toughest part of this was having to sell my parents on the idea of letting me take a year off of school to actually build the project. And this brings me to my last lesson, following your passion. 
For me, I want to make a difference in the world. And both my projects have the potential to do a lot of good. The UNO started off as an, uh, the UNO is a new form of green transportation. And the shredder is being considered as a medevac vehicle, search and rescue, and bomb disposal. Another thing that's important is both my projects are fun. The UNO started off as a combination of my love for motorcycles and science fair and a desire to do something, a green technology. The shredder it was a combination of my love for skateboarding, which I was never very good at, my love for go-karting, which I also wasn't very good at. I have the broken bones to prove it. It's this having pro being involved in projects that are fun that make it not seem like work. That's what lets me get up every morning at 6 a.m. and spend all day pushing these things forward because I really love what I'm doing. Now, I said that the shredder's a lot of fun, so I'm going to show you a quick video clip of it in action. I'm not sure where either of these projects are going to end up, but the last few years has been an amazing journey for me. I've learned a lot, I've met some amazing people, and there's been some incredible ups and downs. The one thing I do know is that these four lessons, creativity, tenacity, having faith in your convictions, and following your passions, have served me really well, and hopefully they can be of use to some of you. Thank you. Well done. Here we go.